What's up, Dragon Nation? I'm Rich with Dragon Nation Gaming. Welcome back to Stationeers. Right now, we're in my test server. Uh, this is a creative server where I go ahead and test some of the stuff that I want to mess with in the game. Kind of wish I would have tried that with the pipe heater <laughs> before I made a video of it, but eh, it's out now. Anyways, so I went ahead and copied everything we did in last episode with getting the water set up. Now, this whole system is set up on a 4x5 platform because that's what our, I guess you call it utility closet, is set up on. So yeah, last episode we got all the water set up. And in this episode, what we need to do is we need to start talking about gases. Uh, at some point, I'm going to need more oxygen. I'll need more propellant. And I'll also need more fuel for uh, the welding torch. Uh, there's a few other things that we're going to need, but the first step is to get ourselves an advanced furnace so that way we can also make some of the other ingots that we're going to need, some of the other alloys. The, uh, I guess they call them super alloys. Uh, we also need to go ahead and set up a filtration system so that way we can separate the gases that we need to make stuff like fuel, which is going to take volatile and oxygen, then also the air for our station. Well, yeah, there's a lot to get into, so let's go ahead and get this started. All right, since we are in creative, that's going to make this a whole lot easier. And I'll try to explain things as if we were playing them in survival. I'm not sure. I'm not sure how that's going to work out. So the cool thing about creative is you can actually open up a spawn menu so you can spawn any object you want in the game there is a little tool right down here which is called the authoring tool this will automatically build items so you don't have to worry about the resources so the first thing i want to go ahead and build is the advanced furnace let's see if we can find that so where are you there you are so this is the advanced furnace. Once you select it, just go ahead and hit F9. And there you go, you get one. All right, let's just go ahead and place it real quick. I want it right here. Now, the whole reason I'm placing it where it is is because uh, you might notice on your regular furnace when we have it outside. Uh, I think in my survival world, I have it somewhere over here. Yeah, that's the base. You can't see what's going on. But yeah, it's just out in the open. The problem with that is uh, it allows a lot of heat to escape because it's open. The outside of the furnace is open up to the atmosphere. So what we need to do is we need to close that off so that way the heat and the pressure will stay inside of the furnace as long as possible. We're going to be doing that with iron frames. But I need to go ahead and finish that furnace. So we'll grab the authoring tool and just go ahead and build and there we go advanced furnace so yeah the issue is is uh steam is down right now which means updates and everything else are all messed up and if i try to go into a save file and try to save while steam is down there might be a few issues so i don't want to do all this work on that save just to not be able to save it but anyways so now that we have the furnace first thing we want to do with the furnace is I'll go ahead and turn it on. It'll just stay on. But we also want to come to these valves and we want to close these valves. Because right now they're open, so anytime we connect them to something, uh, the gas is just going to automatically fill and the whole thing could explode. When we're not paying attention. We definitely don't want that. Next thing we have to worry about, since this thing is going to be inside of an iron frame, I won't have access to the input or the output which are on the sides so what we're going to need are some shoots so that way we could bring it out to uh, the wall so let's go ahead and spawn those in real quick so I'm just going to bring that down so we have room for the bin and then bring it back up because the access for let me see if I can bring it out uh, the chute bin is on the bottom. So yeah, just like that. And then we'll turn that on because that'll just stay on. 
All right, then what we need is we need the output, which we're going to do the same thing. We're just going to go down. Go. And up. And then we're just going to scroll down until we get the shoot outlet. Now, the cool thing about this one is we don't have to worry about power. Okay, can you just get... Just get right there, please. There we go. Uh, this thing doesn't have any power connections, but it does have a data connection, which I probably won't use. Let's go ahead and get rid of this extra shoot. All right, now we need to go ahead and try to connect everything up to power. So, furnace. And as you can see right now on the advanced furnace, the lights are blinking. That is because we don't have the pipes connected to it yet, which we'll start to work on. There we go. All right, so we got that connected, that connected. All right, I guess the next thing we should start talking about is the... Filter low. Oh, I'm almost, my filters are almost out. That's all right, no big deal. All right, so on the back of the furnace, you have actually three connections. One is an output, one is an input, and the other one is an output for liquids. And since we are, oh, I didn't get the radiators in. Yeah, you remember from last episode, this whole thing was supposed to be radiators. Let me put those in real quick. All right. I got those put in. That was my bad. I completely forgot about them. But yeah, you remember from last episode, we had this whole row of radiators for the liquid. Now what we need to do is we need to connect the furnace to the outlet, uh, the outlet pipe. So that way, any water that gets trapped in there, we can get into storage. So we're just going to connect it to this one right here which will make it go through the pipe up there and then through the radiators and into the storage units over here. Now, so far, I've actually tried this a couple times. I've tried it on that base that I have set up over there uh, and it works. So duh, it actually works here too. So this is, it looks like this is the proper way of doing it to try to heat up your eyes so you can get water, at least in the beginning. But yeah, it's working out pretty well. All right, so as I was saying, now we get to worry about the other connections. So we have the input, which we're not going to set up right now. And then we have the output, which is where we're going to get all the gases that we need for canisters, for oxygen, and all that. So what I need to do is I need to grab a ton, and I do mean a ton, a ton of gas pipes. Because what we're going to be doing is... Well, let me go ahead and explain this. Anytime we use the advanced furnace, the gases inside of the furnace are going to be extremely hot. And if we try to put those gases, we try to filter them and then put them into storage, they're going to be way too hot and everything is going to explode. So what we need to do is we need to try to cool those gases down before we store them. And the best way to do that is to get them down to zero degrees Celsius. The reason for that is the warmer a gas is, the more it expands. So it will actually take up the space in a storage container a lot faster if it's, say, room temperature. So we want to go ahead, not only because of the pressure, bring it down to zero degrees Celsius. Uh, gases are also more reactive when they, the hotter they are, the more reactive they are. What that means is the more explosive or the more flammable. The best way to make a gas inert so it doesn't catch fire is to lower the temperature. The lower the temperature, the safer it is. So that's what we want to do now. We want to go ahead and set up a radiator system on this back wall above the liquid radiators. Now this is going to take, this is going to take me a minute. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do three rows. If I could get into the right spot. Hold on. There's not much room. Uh, we're going to be doing three complete rows. One above the other. All the way down. That's about... 
uh, 15 radiators per row. So all together, that's 45 radiators. But that's still not enough. But there's something we could do to help us out. So let me go ahead and get the pipes and the radiators connected. And then we'll go to the next step. All right, so the next thing we need to do, since we now have our radiator wall, that's a lot of radiators, man. Uh, what we need to do is we need to connect that up to the furnace. Now, we need to figure out which side we want to start on. We're going to do like an S pattern. So the top will go this way, this middle row will go that way, and the bottom row will go this way. Now, the reason I want to set it up that way is because on this side, is where we're gonna have our storage and our filtration system. So that's actually gonna come from this bottom one right here. So let me actually just go ahead and bring this in real quick. There we go. So the gas is gonna be traveling this way and go through the filtration system. So what I need to do is the top. The top will go this way and then it'll go back around this way and then I need to connect it over there so it goes back this way. Alright, I'm gonna have to use my jetpack on this one. And the sun's coming up again. Alright, so like I said, the gases when they come out of the furnace, they're gonna go this way and then the middle they're gonna go that way and then that way uh, allowing them to stay inside of the radiator as long as possible now I don't know if that's the most efficient because I've seen other people that just do a solid radiator which means they put a pipe here and just connect all the rows but for some reason for me this just seems the best way to do it it might not be though all right so we have our I think the output is the top one yeah so what we need to do is we need to go ahead and connect the furnace to the top since that's going to be our start. I'm going to need more. I'm going to need a lot more pipes. Alright, we have at least enough to finish this. There we go. Alright, now that we have that, what we need to do is go ahead and do our input. But I'm going to need a little bit more pipe. So later on not in this episode probably next episode uh all the gases that we mix together to fill up canisters the canisters are going to be over here so that way they're easy access from the entrance which is somewhere over there so what i need to do since the storage is on this side i need to bring it to this side so they're going to go towards the roof come back this way uh get mixed however they need to be mixed and then they're going to fill the canisters that are right here so what I need to do is I need to figure out where the pipes are going to go so that way I can bring this pipe exactly where I need it and also to make sure we have enough room for other stuff that we need to do. Now what we're going to do is the storage is just going to be portable gas, what are they called? Portable gas tanks I think they're called, I'm not sure. They're kind of like the liquid one but they're yellow, they're like the gas. So we need to connect that to the base with, I think they're called connectors. Let's see if I can find them. Yep, item tank connector. So there's going to be four different gases that we are going to store. The rest of the gases we're going to get rid of, but the main gases that we really do need for this base and for survival are volatiles, oxygen, nitrogen, and carbon dioxide. Volatiles and oxygen will make fuel. Oxygen, nitrogen, and carbon dioxide will make air for the base. Oxygen will make oxygen tank for our suit, of course. Uh, CO2 will use as propellant. And yeah, I think that's it. The fuel will be for the welding torch. So what I want to do is I want the connector to be facing this way so the input well input slash output will be facing towards the left then we want to go ahead and make sure there's enough space for the pipes and I want to put down four of these so three and four 
All right, so now that we have the location of these items, actually, let me see if I can find, I don't know if I can. Uh, I think they're just tank. I think that's what they're called. They're portable gas tanks. Uh, they should be the yellow ones. The orange ones are the advanced ones. They're insulated. So that's not it. Yeah, I'm not seeing, are they something else? Hold on, let me try canister, maybe. Uh, gas canister empty. There we go. So that way we could put these. Actually, let's leave those off for right now. So that way we have room to put all the pipes that we need to put down. So the next thing we need to do is... Oh, yeah, I still need to connect that. That's what I was talking about earlier. All the pipes that are going to the canisters and to the furnace are going to go through the ceiling. So the input, the fuel, is going to go through the ceiling as well. So let's connect that real quick. I just noticed it when I saw the button flashing. Because we don't have this connected yet. So this is going to come out because that pipe is in the way. And then we're just going to go straight up to the ceiling. And then it's going to go towards the inside of the base. Just like that. There we go. All right. Now what we need to do is once we have the um, gases, which are cooled down and ready to store, we need to filter each one of those gases out or filter them up so they go into the right canister. Now, the way we're going to do that is I think it's called atmospherics. So Atmo, yep, there it is, Atmospherics. So I'm actually going to need five of those, so three, four, five. And what I'm going to do is uh, the Atmospherics actually have a few different things you could use them for. You could use it for air conditioner, filtration, oh, electrolyzer, H2 combustor, and then back to air conditioner. We need the filtration, and we're going to place five of those. Two. Oh, no, that's the wrong one. I need drill. There we go. Uh, it's Unfortunately, it doesn't stay. You actually have to scroll again. Uh, let's go ahead and put this one there, because that's in the way of placing filtration. Filtration, and one here all right so here's the thing we have five filtrations but only four stores the reason for that is uh we are going to filter out waste gases gases that we don't need let's go ahead and look for the filters and we can see what those gases are so if we look for filter uh the first gas we're going to be messing with is carbon dioxide that's going to be one of the ones we're going to be keeping uh, we need two of those, which go in the last one. Uh, the next one is, let's see, filter is going to be nitrogen, which is one of the gases we're going to be keeping. And that's going to go into this one. Now, I'll tell you in a second why I place these in the order that I do. All right, so we go to the next filter, and that should be, yep, nitrous oxide. What nitrous oxide is, is it's a um, laughing gas. It's actually something we don't need. I don't think it really has use in the game right now. It's just a waste gas. I mean, if you really needed to use it, I guess you could use it for something, but I don't know what you would use it for. Ah, shit, water. All right, let's grab some water real quick. All right, jetpack, please. Thank you. It's cool that I have this set up. All right, put that back. All right. Now, since uh, these are just going to stay on, we're never going to turn them off. That's all right, because we'll have plenty of power. So yeah, nitrous oxide is one of the ga uh, gases that are just waste we're going to be getting rid of. The next one, I think, should be nitrogen. 
or oxygen, sorry. Uh, that's going to be the ones we're going to be keeping. So we'll go ahead and get two of those filters. Now, the reason we did only one of the nitrous oxide is because it's not the only waste gas that we need to filter out. I think it should be the next one. So filter. So go down past oxygen. Yep, there it is. So this is pollutant, which is gas that we don't need. This is just another waste gas. We're going to go ahead and put it in the other spot. And then the last filters are going to be the volatiles, which are... Uh, it's It should be hydrogen. I guess they call it volatiles because it's a mixture of a couple of different gases. But honestly, volatile is just hydrogen. I don't know why they didn't just say it's hydrogen. Anyways... All right, so now that we got those filters in and you know which gases need to go where, what we need to do is we need to connect everything. So we're gonna grab our pipes, wrench. So on each one of these filtration systems, there's three access points. Uh, the back one here is the input. That's where all the gases will go in. Then it will filter out just the volatiles. This filtration will. Uh, the unfiltered gases, which are every other gas, I want to go back through the system to get filtered out again. And then on this end, this is what is filtered. The gas that was filtered, which in this one is volatile, which will go to the storage. So I need to do this on every single one of these. On just four of them. So this gives us an idea of where I need to bring our exhaust or our um, huh, radiator pipes. This gives us an idea of where I need to bring it. Since this is the input, I'm going to bring this back to the wall. And you need to go up. So I just need to leave enough room for a couple of things. We're going to need a volume pump and then a pipe analyzer. And I'll explain why here in a little bit. Uh, let's go ahead and turn you... Actually, let's just go up one more just in case. All right. Then what we need to do is go ahead and go... Hunger. Caution. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's always something. We'll go back down to... Oh, shit. I need more pipe. Just keep running out of everything. Yeah, setting this stuff up does take a lot of resources. All right. Then we can go ahead and go back in and connect to our radiator back here. And that should be it for this area. Everything should be connected so we can go ahead and close this area off now. This was the only thing I was waiting for. I was just uh, trying to make sure I put the pipes in the right place. So to close this off, what we're gonna do is grab some iron frames so iron, okay, iron, there we go. Now the reason, I think I explained this earlier why I do this. Uh, the iron frames, once you weld them up, they count as a vacuum. I, I'm guessing that's what they count as. Uh, so it actually helps to hold the pressure and the temperature inside of the furnace. So let's go ahead and weld those up real quick. Actually, there is one more thing I need to do before we do that, just real quick. All right, we're not quite done yet. Actually, let's put this up. So one other thing that we need to do, if we take a look up here right now, this is a waste tank and it is at 1,129 kilopascals. It's starting to fill up. At some point, we're gonna have to empty that canister out. Now, the best place to do that is uh, the connection to the filtration system so we could filter those gases out. But I think, if I remember correctly, it's just canister storage. Yep, there it is right there. We just need one of these. And we're just going to put it right here. It's actually use delete. There we go. Just like that. So what I need to do is I need to go ahead and connect that to the system. 
Shit. Okay, let's go through the top. Yeah, there's just no room back here. There we go. Alright, so we need to bring it through. Oh, I need. Uh, where is. There it is. There we go. And then we'll bring it back and connect it to. That pipe right there. Great. So I don't think we have to worry about the heat, so it doesn't need to go through the radiator system and cool down. I think we're fine. All right, so now that could get the canisters that we put in there could be emptied out. And we could go ahead and we'll have to make another canister at some point so we can fill that in. Now, the best way to do that, now that we have that closed, uh, is smart canisters. Uh, smart canisters don't take a whole lot of resources. They take, I think it's just silicon, steel, and copper, if I'm not mistaken. So yeah, we're just going to go ahead and put that in here. Actually, since that's filling up, we'll just put that, that one uh, can empty out. See, now it's at 8 kilopascals. So yeah, it's almost completely empty. So we're good on that. All right, so now what I need to do is I need to connect all of this up. So what's going to happen is the exhaust gases from the advanced furnace are going to go to all of the inputs. Now, I could just have it going straight from the, we'll just call this the exhaust. I keep wanting to call it that for some reason. Uh, it could go to each one individually, but the best way that I've found to do it is... Go ahead and just connect the entire system so it goes back through the same uh, filtration. Let's put you down here. There we go. Uh, let me actually explain what I'm talking about. So here we have the exhaust, which is going to this input. Now what you could do is you could take your pipe from the unfiltered gases and just send it to the next filter. Like this but the problem with that is sometimes gases escape like sometimes the volatiles don't get filtered 100% and you'll end up with volatile in this pipe and then it gets stuck somewhere and the pressure in the the pipes will start building it's a pain in the ass so the best thing to do is just go ahead and just connect them so that's what I need to do with every single one of these filters, which is going to take me a minute. And then, of course, the filtered we're going to connect to the storage. So let me go ahead and do that real quick. Be right back. All right, so I went ahead and connected all the power cords as well. Uh, these do have not only power, but also data. I've never actually used the data for these, but I guess that's something you could do if you really wanted to. All right, so now that we have that set up, uh, we still need the containers for storage, but I'm not worried about that at the sec at this second. Uh, what we need to do is, right now, the way that it is set up is if we hit, I think it's this valve on the furnace and open it up, this is the exhaust, uh, that will send those hot gases through these pipes and the pipes will explode because the gases will be way too hot. So what we need to do is we need to allow the gases enough time in the radiators to cool down to a point where we don't have to worry about anything exploding. The only way to do that is to stop the gases from coming into this system. So what we're going to do is I need a volume pump and I need to get rid of one of those uh, uh, pipes. Uh, let's actually just type in, I think it's just pump. So this, all of this is, I did it twice, what the hell? Anyways, uh, when I'm done here, I'm actually going to go ahead and build this in creative once steam comes back online. Alright, so let's grab a pipe. I was just worried about something going wrong. This... Everything that I've built so far in the last couple of episodes is a lot of work. It's hours upon hours, and I don't want to lose it. 
All right, so we need the volume pump to be facing this way. Uh, let's go ahead and open up the valve. Nope, open it, not close it. There we go, 100 liters. Now, what we need to do is we need to set up a system that will turn that pump off when we need it. Now, the way we're gonna do that is whenever the temperature inside of this pipe is uh, above a certain temperature, it will turn that pump off. But with logic, we can't turn items off, so we have to set it up to where it turns it on. So what we're gonna need is a pipe analyzer, which I don't have one over here, so we're gonna have to get another one. So pipe analyzer, so that way we could read the temperature inside of that pipe. So, nope, rotate you that way. And that's just gonna stay on, so we'll go ahead and turn it on. Let's get rid of the extra. All right, now we can go ahead and grab our cables, get that connected to power, so we can go ahead and get that set up. Now, that's gonna be set up with the logic system, of course. Right there. There we go. Now, we're not even close to placing all the logic that we need to place for this base. This right here, all of this logic is just for the water. Uh, the logic that we need to set up for this is really simple. It's just a simple um, compare logic. That's it. But what I want to do is I want to go ahead and name everything that we need to use. So gas. And this one's also going to be gas. There we go. All right, so all we're gonna need, did I leave any logic over here? No, I didn't. So all we're gonna need is we need two logic, uh, logic IOs. I think that's what they're called, right? Yeah. Two logic IOs, one logic memory, and then one logic, what is it called? Logic math? Logic processor. All right, F9, there we go. All right, let's go to make some room for these. Now this will, since I'm spawning these in, they're spawning in in full stacks, but we don't need all of that. All right, so we're gonna start with logic IO. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and put the logic reader right actually up, there we go. Uh, we only need a logic writer, uh, logic reader. We only need a logic writer because we're only writing to one item. Let's go ahead and rotate it. So logic writer. Uh, then we're gonna need our memory so we can set the temperature. Put you right there. And then we just need to compare. So this is gonna turn it, actually we need to come down here. We're gonna turn this into a logic compare. There we go. All right, now I get to have fun and connect that all up to cables. All right, so I got all the cables hooked up. I have everything named. Let's grab our screwdriver. All right, so we need to read the information from the pipe analyzer gas. So let's go to the logic reader, uh, pipe, Analyzer gas. There we go. We need to read the temperature. There it is. All right, now we need to set the temperature. So, uh, as we were saying earlier, we want to put the temperature to at least negative zero for storage of the gases. Now, the logic I or the logic chips, they only read in Kelvin. So, we need to figure out what uh, zero degrees Celsius is in Kelvin which I've already actually done. It's uh, 273. So hold C, 73, there we go. All right, let's turn on the light reader since I already got that set up. All right, now what we need to do is we need to go to the logic compare unit. Uh, we need to read the information from the logic reader gas. There we go. Uh, the logic memory gas. Uh, 
liquid gas there we go all right so we need to set it up so it will turn that volume pump on we want it to turn on when the temperature is less than 273 kelvin so the compare unit is going to be set to less we can turn that on all right now we need to go to the logic writer the where's the i can't see come on let me over here it's hard to get over here uh the input is going to be the logic compare gas Hunger. oh come on uh logic compare gas there we go the output is going to go to the volume pump gas oh that was quick and it's going to tell it to turn on so whenever the temperature is below 270 degree 273 kelvin that will turn on right now how is there any temperature in there shouldn't be reading any temperature if it's empty should be a vacuum but oh well screw it all right let's get that to shut up real quick all right now that we have that what we need to do is we need to go ahead and get our containers and start filling try to fill them all right so what i want to try to do let's try to do this i want to go ahead and heat up the furnace so that way we can heat the gases up and try to get them to go through these pipes but since we don't have fuel hooked up we're gonna to have to do that with regular ice so let's get some a stack of actually let's just do volatile so volatile ice uh put that in my mining belt so it doesn't melt and then we need oxide and of course we need to separate them I'm gonna do the same thing we would do with the regular furnace all right oxide no come here there you go all right, so we have the volatile. We'll do eight. And then the oxide will do 16. Uh, we'll go ahead and put it in the chute. Uh, so eight. 16. And hit the button. Should be heating up. These are all closed, right? Yeah. Oh, I think I need to melt the stuff first, don't I? Is that not going to work? Oh, there it goes. Pressure's going up. There it is. All right. I don't want to throw any more oxide or any more volatile in there. But what we could do is we could throw in some ice so we can see what type of gases we get from what. All right, so we can melt the ice this way and get water. Not only that, but it will also give us oxygen. What water doing? Eh. All right, so now that we have pressure inside of the furnace, we have gases in there that are heated up. What I want to do is I want to go ahead and just let all those gases out into our exhaust system and watch that volume pump turn off, which I think it's this one. All right, we'll do 20 liters. Yep, it shut off because the temperature is above 273 Kelvin. It's actually 930, 915. So right now all the gases are staying in the pipe that is connected to the radiators and since it is nighttime and the temperature is negative 63 66 degrees celsius which is right over here uh those radiators are touching cold air which is cooling those gases down now during the daytime it's going to be above uh i think it gets up to like 40 degrees celsius so it won't cool those gases down very much. So a lot of the time, the only time we can really cool down gases is during the night. But they're doing pretty good. I mean, they're already at six, 600 Kelvin. They were at 900. That's not bad. Uh, how much time do we have left at night? 
Uh, we can tell how long the night is going to last by looking at the temperature. Uh, if the temperature keeps going down, which it is, that means we haven't reached the middle of the night yet. When the temperature starts to go up, that means it's starting to get daytime. But since the temperature is kind of stagnant, that means... Yeah, I think we're in the middle of the night. No, it's still getting colder. So yeah, close to the middle of the night. So we have plenty of time for this to cool down. Let me go ahead and wait until the temperature reads 273 Kelvin. And we can watch that pump turn on by itself. All right, so we're at 273. It should be turning on. There it goes. And now the gas is going to start pumping in. So, of course, with oxide ice or, uh, sorry, volatile ice, uh, we get volatiles. With oxide ice, we get oxygen. And with uh, water ice, we get nitrogen. Now, of course, we're also going to get some CO2 because, well, it was hot air. I think it's the oxygen that turns... Yeah, I think it's the oxygen that turns into CO2 when you heat it up. So I think that's where we're getting the CO2 from. But yeah, the system seems to be working pretty well. Is this empty yet? It's not quite empty. All right, let's go ahead and close this. All right, so I'm trying to debate on whether or not I should continue. Uh, we still have some other stuff that we could do, but it's going to take a little bit of time. Yeah, we could go ahead and get the hardware set up and just try the logic in next episode. Yeah, let's go ahead and do it. Uh, I need to go ahead and get some stuff real quick, and then we'll... Filter low. <laughs> Another filter. Uh, we'll go ahead and try to get everything set up for the canisters for our suit. All right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to try to set everything up to fill up canisters oxygen canisters propelling canisters uh the fuel for our welder and i want to set them up over there what we need to do though is we need to get the pipes going from the storage so let me go ahead get over on this side so that way we can see a little bit better so i'm just going to go ahead and bring these up now, one thing I don't want to do is I don't want to completely connect all these pipes. I don't want to fill up a pipe with the wrong ratio of gases. I'll explain that here in a second. So we'll connect this and then we'll just go up and three. One, two, three. Oh, right there. And then we need to go in, so that way we can connect that to the canister storage. Uh, so the volatiles are simple. The volatiles in the ox oxygen are going to be simple. They just go straight for right now. And then I'm going to go ahead and leave a gap. Because what I don't want to do is we're going to be combining the volatile and the oxygen to make fuel for the furnace and for our welder and what I don't want to do is I don't want to connect everything up and allow the gases to pass through at the wrong ratio we need to make sure that they're mixed at the correct ratio so we'll go I need more pipe yeah this uses up a whole lot of pipe all right so the volatile is gonna go straight to here the oxygen is going to go to here and then we're going to go in so that way we can connect it to the volatiles. Now in order to mix the gases at the right ratio, let's go ahead and get rid of this one and then we'll connect the fuel to where it needs to go with the furnace. There we go. Uh, in order to get the right ratio, what we're going to need is a mixer. So we'll grab mix. There we go. Put 
put that right here. So the mixer has two inputs and one output. So let's make sure it's this way. So input one is at the bottom, input two is on the side, and the output is on the front. I also need to get those connected to the power at some point, which I think I'll just go straight that way. All right, so the ratio that we need to mix these, we can find out if we hit F1, go up to the search, and type in fuel. Uh, go down to the canister, and right here, where is it? There it is. So the canister supplies is a 64 liter mixture of 66% volatile and 34% uh, 34 oxygen. So 66 and 34. So input one is the volatile, which needs to be 66%. Oh, nope, wrong way. So 66 and 34. There we go. So now all I need to do is connect that up to power so we can go ahead and uh, get that started once I connect the pipes down there. But the problem is, uh, as I was saying earlier, if I turn this on at the wrong ratio before I set that ratio, that's when we'll have trouble. So what I need to do now is... Okay, we don't have any room. Let me get rid of some stuff. We don't need the logic chips right now. We'll be taking care of that later. Alright, what I'm going to need is I need the storage for the canisters. So, store... There we go. All right, we're going to be connecting up like volume pumps and stuff like that. So I need to make sure there is enough room. So I don't want to bring it all the way up against the tank, the water tank. We're going to bring it to about right there. And again, we're going to go ahead and leave one space. And then for the third one. There we go. So this one right here is going to be the fuel, which we have from our mixture. So all I need to do is bring the pipes to that one. And then what I need to do, since I need, I need a volume pump, I need a pressure regulator, and I also need a pipe analyzer. I'm going to go ahead and bring it down to give me some room for all of those items, all three of them. Because if I took it straight up, we wouldn't have room for that. Okay, I need more pipe. Uh, this thing uses so much pipe. And I have to, I still have to do this in survival too. And, oops, wrong way. We need to go this way with it. Then back this way all right so there's our fuel connected once we get everything powered up and we get it turned on but I'm also gonna set this up with logic as well uh, a lot of work man a lot of work all right now we could just go ahead and bring oxygen straight to the canister there you go and then bring it down from the bottom again. Just like that. All right, so this one is for the oxygen canister for our suit. This one is gonna be the propellant for our jetpack, which is gonna be the CO2. But what I need need to do first is I need to make the room uh, for the vents for the atmosphere inside of the base. For that, I need some active vents. Now, this isn't something we have to set up right now. I just need to make the room for it. All right, so we got the vent. I also need a door because we can't, or a wall because I can't place the vents without a wall. You have to, you have to place them on something solid. All right, so we'll get it rotated. This, nope, other way. There we go. 
there and right there actually i don't think i need that one i can get rid of that one what is it grinder i think yeah all right so our active vents we're gonna go here i need to rotate them so the connections are at the top and i'm gonna need more pipe uh this is getting ridiculous all right you go together all right let's grab some pipe all right so what i need to do is we need to set up another mixture for atmospheric air which is a mixture of oxygen nitrogen and co2 all three of these which is going to be a little bit difficult because I can't remember how to do it. All right, so first we're going to set up the oxygen. Uh, let's go this way. All right, then we're going to need the mixer. We're going to put the input one on the oxygen side, so we need to turn it that way. Uh, input two is going to be the nitrogen. So we need to go here. Oh, come on. Come on. There you go. And once again, I'm going to leave uh, one piece disconnected. So that way we don't have any issues with that. Actually, I need to bring it the other way. Do this. That way. There we go. That'll work. So now it's disconnected. We don't have to worry about it. So what we need to do is we need to figure out the ratio of oxygen to nitrogen at this point. Which I think is 70, 72 to 28. I'll have to double check, but I think that's right. So just come up to the valve... The input one is the oxygen that actually needs to be at 28 we need to go the other way nitrogen needs to be at 72 percent now the reason that we're doing this is oxygen is very very flammable o2 so if we have atmosphere in this base this base is pressurized with only oxygen uh anytime we try to use our welder or any other item that gets heated it will cause a fire so we use nitrogen which is an inert gas to prevent that from happening so now what we need to do uh, is connect the carbon dioxide which provides the plants that we have to uh, grow with food uh, the plants require co2 in order to grow apparently i just need to figure out Go ahead and bring you to here. Uh, elbow. And then straight back. And I'm going to need more pipe. Alright, we'll leave one section open, of course, again. There we go. And then we'll go ahead and connect it to... No, this needs to go. This is the output. And then we'll get another mixer. Put it right there, right here. So the oxygen and hydrogen or oxygen and nitrogen mix will be input one. Come on, rotate the correct way, would you? There we go. And the input two which I need more pipe for. There we go. Uh, input two is going to be the carbon dioxide. And we're going to set that to a 2% mixture. So the oxygen and nitrogen mixture is going to be uh, input one. That's going to be set to 98%. No, nope, other way. 
uh, 90... 8% and the CO2 is going to be at 2% and that is our air for pressurizing our base Then I need to get everything connected to power uh, We're gonna bring that back to Here Obo Uh, wrong one. All right, connect here. Then there. All right, now we have all of our mixes set up. We should be okay to connect everything. But we still have to connect up the carbon dioxide to this canister. So that way we can get the propellant for our jetpack, which is what we're going to be using the CO2 for. Should be something else. I mean, you wouldn't think that uh, carbon dioxide would be a good fuel for a jetpack. They ought to change that. All right, let's go this way. Uh, straight. All right, need more pipe. Now, I might have to change these pipes at some point because there's still some other stuff that I need to put on the ceiling. Uh, I need to put lights up and, oh yeah, pipe analyzers. Yeah, um, so I might have to move that. Actually, I probably should go ahead and move that. Uh, let's take you out. Switch you for straight, and then come straight out from here. Yeah, and then I'll connect that up to here. So what I need to do right now is I need to go ahead and also get everything connected to power. I'll also go ahead and put up the lights as well. But there is one thing that we could do real quick is... Do I have any? Yes, I do. Uh, at some point, I want to set these... Uh, with logic so they only turn on when the pipes are at a certain pressure so that way we could go ahead and make sure that the canisters over here always have a supply of whatever gases they use so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up analyzer I want it facing that way I think that should be right uh, so that one's for the fuel, and this one is for the uh, oxygen or the air mixture. Let's go ahead and turn those on, and I need to get them connected to power. So what I'll do is I'll connect everything to power real quick, and then I'll get some lights as well, just so we can actually see what the hell's going on. Uh, I'm not going to set these up with logic yet. We'll do that in the further episodes. Uh, so yeah, get them connected to power. So what I'll do is I'm probably just going to continue to the next episode right after this one. So we'll probably be here and creative again. Uh, but yeah, next episode we'll go ahead and get all the logic and everything set up for the canisters. So we can go ahead and start filling those. And then we have to start figuring out how to pressurize this base. Which is going to be a lot of work. <laughs> Uh, because not only do we have to worry about the pressure, we also have to worry about temperature that we still need to set up as well. But yeah, we'll worry about that in the next episode. Until then, make sure to like and subscribe, all that good stuff. I'll see you on the next one. Peace.